it was noticeable how the congregational singing got quieter as we got into each verse then. <laughs> but well, well done for having a go, at least. Let's pray together. Father God, as we open your word this morning, we ask that you will speak to us. You ask that, we ask that you will, find, uh, you will help us to find ways of enjoying ourselves and finding pleasure in life through all that you give to us. So will you speak to us through your word this morning? Will you have just a word for each one of us? And may we go home equipped and challenged and nourished for the week ahead and beyond. We pray these prayers in your name. Amen. Amen. Now, you may be showing your age, depending on how you answer this one, but can you remember when the Salvation Army and other holiness churches in particular uh, would stop their members from enjoying what they called worldly pleasures? Are you old enough to remember back that far? Uh, I'm, I'm not old enough to remember back that far, but I've heard people tell uh, and when I was growing up, there were definitely people in our core who would tell us about when they weren't allowed to go and enjoy what the church called worldly pleasures. Things like going to the pub. My nan could never understand why I would go to a pub, even if I was going to have a soft drink, because the way that she was brought up was that Salvationists and Christians wouldn't go in to a pub. They certainly wouldn't go into a club. Dancing was definitely frowned upon. I remember Anne telling me that. Dancing, definitely not doing dancing. Not going to the cinema. Yeah, remember not being able to go to the cinema or to go to watch football matches and that kind of stuff because they were seen as worldly pleasures. And so we were very strict on what we saw as bad activities or worldly pleasures. And what we thought was that Salvationists and Christians should really only find enjoyment and pleasure in spiritual things, in good things. We should only engage with those things, things like, uh, you know, coming to worship, uh, sacred music, uh, fellowship amongst believers, and, and we should stick just to those things. Now, there may be some good in that kind of thinking. But we also have to acknowledge this morning that there is some bad in that kind of thinking too. It's led to what we call now the sacred-secular divide, and we're still battling that sacred-secular divide today. Let me tell you what I mean by that. Some Christians, and plenty of salvationists because of the way that we were brought up, separate things like hobbies and work and money as secular things, as nothing to do with God. And so God has nothing to do with their hobbies. God has nothing to do with their work. God has nothing to do with their money. And they separate those things from what they see as spiritual things, things like coming to church being a part of church, Bible study, and prayer. And what we've come to believe because of that divide is that the secular things of life are fun and enjoyable and bring us much pleasure, but we shouldn't do them. And spiritual things are very sacred and belong to God, but they're all about sacrifice, and so we can't find any pleasure or enjoyment in those. Do you see what I'm saying? You recognize that divide? It's not perhaps as black and white as that, but there is certainly something behind it. What we're coming to learn these days is that in good measure, things like socializing with our friends, going to see a good film, enjoying sports, now that probably does depend on which team you follow, but those things are not always bad or unspiritual. We can find God in them. We can connect with God through them. And we can enjoy them and enjoy the enjoyment. We're also learning that the things that we call spiritual aren't always about sacrifice, that actually we can enjoy things like worship, we are allowed to smile in worship. Did you know that? 
Some salvationists think there's, there must be like an order and regulation somewhere that says you can't enjoy worship and you can't smile when you're singing. At least that's the only excuse I can give for some of the faces that I've seen over the years. None here, obviously. We can enjoy spiritual things as much as we do sacred things. So actually, if they're good things, so I'm not talking about sin, but if they're good things, they shouldn't be things that are guilty pleasures because there's no reason for us to feel guilty in enjoying life and enjoying pleasure and thanking God for them. Here's what I mean about this problem. This is what David Murray, a Christian writer, says. Some people feel guilty about pleasure derived through bodily senses. Whether it's hearing beautiful music or tasting a quality steak or in physical intimacy in marriage, when they feel pleasure in these things, they immediately feel guilty, draining away any momentary joy. Some of that's because of our upbringing. American revivalist preacher Jonathan Edwards says that through true religion, we can put away our unnecessary scruples and seek, embrace, and enjoy the pleasure that God gives through the senses. Edwards, who was um, alive back in the 1700s, I think, off the top of my head, writes, God has given us of his redundant bounty, bounty many things for the delight of our senses, for our pleasure and gratification. Religion is not a thing that makes these things useless to us, nor does it cut us off from the enjoyment of them. Being a Christian doesn't stop you from enjoying life and enjoying the good things of life. If we enjoy pleasure in, in moderation, so if it doesn't go over the top and doesn't become an addiction uh, or doesn't become an idol, so something we chase uh, ahead of God, then it can be a good thing. Maybe the best thing that we can hear this morning is that God wants us to enjoy life. Now, I'm sure if I ask you if God wants us to enjoy life, you would all say, yes. But we don't always behave that way. God wants us to enjoy life. So Alistair picked those verses out from our Bible reading this morning. Here they are again, verses 12 and 13. The preacher says to us, I know that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good while they live. That each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all their toil. This is the gift of God. God has given us things to enjoy. Now notice what he picked out there. He didn't pick out Bible study. He didn't pick out worship. He didn't pick out prayer. He picked out what we, and in fact the population in general, would see as good things in life. He says, enjoy good food. Enjoy good drink. Soft drinks if you're a salvationist. That's another story for another day. But find pleasure in those things. Find enjoyment in those things. You can be happy because of the good things in life. One of the questions that I posed last week in our message notes, if you picked up a set of message notes, for reflection or for discussion in our small groups was the question, is happiness opposed to holiness? And we talked about that in our group. Is happiness opposed to holiness? And the answer very clearly from Ecclesiastes chapter 3 is, no, they are not opposed to each other. You can be happy, you can enjoy the good things of life, and you can be holy at the same time. You can enjoy life now. Many Christians uh, feel that there's nothing to enjoy in this life. We're not allowed to enjoy things. What, we, what we're here for is to sacrifice things. Um, and we do that because there'll be great things to enjoy when we get to heaven. What Ecclesiastes says to us is we can enjoy a little bit of heaven now in the good things of life. And they reflect what heaven's going to be like when we get there. We can enjoy the good things in life. 
But we do need to be careful with these verses because what the preacher, the writer of Ecclesiastes, is, is not saying is simply don't worry, be happy. You know, and just be, don't sacrifice anything, just enjoy life uh, and, you know, focus your life on enjoying everything. Our pleasure, our enjoyment has to be grounded in God. The preacher reminds us that pleasure and enjoyment, good food and good drink and all those other things that we enjoy are gifts from God. Our enjoyment must be grounded in God, centred in God. They are his gifts to us. They are not something that we go and get for ourselves. And that's sometimes the mistake that people will make. So they will, they will think that they are responsible for going out and finding luxury for themselves or finding you know, enough money to enjoy and have pleasure from, uh, find their own happiness. And that's sometimes then when we come up short. All those things are good gifts from God. Maybe the best way to be happy, the best way to enjoy ourselves is simply to accept those pleasures from God. This is how J. Stafford Wright puts it. This is the first of similar refrains. These verses about enjoying life uh, is the first of similar refrains in Ecclesiastes that if we take them out of context might seem to advocate a life of mere pleasure-seeking. You can wear yourself out by trying to find the solution of life in nature and history. You can make the pursuit of luxury or money your chief aim, but you will end up in frustration because you are grounding yourself in the material world, which does not hold the key to satisfaction. Why not simply take your daily life from the hand of God? That's where we find pleasure. That's where we find enjoyment simply taking our daily life from the hand of God. And the writer of Ecclesiastes is careful to balance our, our enjoyment of life and good food and the good things of life with our desire to worship and to serve God and others. And he says, just as you can find pleasure and enjoyment in the good things of life, like good food and good drink and all of those sorts of things, you can find equal pleasure and enjoyment in serving God and serving other people. We should enjoy our service to God. Sometimes we feel guilty about that as well. Can you believe that? You know, we come along and we... I don't know, play our instruments or um, sing in the songsters or maybe we help with the uh, community food hub on a Monday or Employment Plus or that sort of thing and we find ourselves in enjoying it and we think, oh, we shouldn't be, this should be a, a sacrifice, you know, this should be something that costs us and we think, well, we shouldn't be enjoying those sorts of things. But Ecclesiastes tells us we can find pleasure in God's work. We can find pleasure in ministry and service. They are a gift from God too, and we can be grateful that he has a purpose for us in life. So as we conclude our thinking on these verses this morning, I want you to think about what is it that you enjoy in life? Maybe even some of those guilty pleasures that we talked about earlier in our meeting. What is it in life that makes you happy or makes you smile? Michael Whitmer writes these words. We must see God's gifts of creation as windows into his glory and opportunities to praise him. But we may also find pleasure in them. We should thank God for our day on the lake, but we don't need to say praise you Jesus with each cast. We must thank God for our daily bread, but it's okay to focus on the flavours of our sandwich while we're eating it. It's actually okay to enjoy stuff and to say thank you to God for them as we do it. We don't have to do it all the time, every few seconds, so, so well, thank you God, you know, thank you God for this new day, thank you God for the fact that my car's working, thank you God, you know, we can, but we don't have to be, 
thinking like that because it's, it's likely to be less enjoyable if we're trying to think like that all the time. But we can just pause every now and then and say, God, this is a good sandwich. Thank you for providing these things. We can come out of the cinema and say, thank you, God. That was a good film. I've, I've kind of forgotten life for a couple of hours and got lost in the story. And that's a good thing, God. Thank you. So what is it that you enjoy? What is it that makes you happy and smile? Why not take a few minutes this week to write a list of those things? And then say to God, I'm, I'm going to try and remember you in these things. I'm going to try and remember that these things are a gift from you. And as I do them, I'm going to say, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for that gift of whatever it is. We can resolve to enjoy the good things of life and to thank God for them. We're not going to sing the song, but there are songs in the songbook that we could perhaps use to uh, thank God for the good things that he brings us in life. One of them is song 394, which just picks some of those things that we might enjoy to thank God for. Thank you for every new good morning. Thank you for every fresh new day. Thank you that I may cast my burdens wholly on you. Thank you for every friend I have, Lord. Thank you for everyone I know. Thank you when I can feel forgiveness to my greatest foe. Thank you for leisure and employment. Thank you for every heartfelt joy. Thank you for all that makes me happy and for melody. Thank you even for every shade and sorrow. Thank you for comfort in your word. Thank you that I'm guided by you everywhere I go. Thank you for grace to know your gospel. Thank you for all your spirit's power. Thank you for your unfailing love which reaches far and near. Thank you for full and free salvation. Thank you for grace to hold it fast. Thank you, O oh Lord, I want to thank you that I'm free to thank. Even the freedom to thank God is a gift from God. Maybe you could use those words this week as you write down your list of things that you enjoy and that you're going to remember God in in the days to come. Let's pray together. We just want to spend a few moments having looked at your word this morning, God, to say thank you. To say thank you for every good gift that you bring us those things that we've been taught to say thank you for, and those things that are still gifts from you, but maybe we have to break out of some teaching that says we can't enjoy them. If they're good things, Lord, if they build us up, if they point towards you, will you help us not to see them any longer as guilty pleasures, but to see them as gifts from you? and to enjoy them in your presence and in your knowledge and your love. We ask these prayers in your name. Amen.